going to start the meeting of the uh, Holbrook uh, School uh, Committee on uh, March uh, 31st, uh, 2016. The uh, first uh, item uh, on our agenda is uh, I'm going to ask if you would all uh, please uh, join me in uh, pledging allegiance to our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, we're going to start off with citizens' concerns, but I'm going to do something a little different because um, <clears throat> we have had a citizen's concern for some time now with a group, Holbrook Cares. I have been uh, trying to uh, work on uh, a response to Holbrook Cares with the various members of the administration. And I have in my hand a letter uh, addressed uh, to the committee through me uh, from uh, Dr. Uh, DeMello, a principal of the uh, Holbrook Junior Senior High School, and it reads as follows. Dear Holbrook School Committee members, I would like to inform you of my intention to meet with members of the Holbrook Cares Committee to investigate potential ways in which we can partner together toward educating our learning community around topics of safety and the dangers of drug abuse and other health-related issues. The Holbrook Cares Committee, in conjunction with the Holbrook Police Department, should be commended for the outstanding work that they have already conducted with our civics club students and the community at large around drug education. I look forward to our future discussions and will keep the members of the Holbrook School Committee informed about any recommendations that result from these meetings as we move forward. Sincerely, Mary Ann DeMello uh, and uh, Dr. DeMello, perhaps uh, we can talk about this a little later on the agenda uh, as part of your uh, report from the, uh, the high school, if you uh, don't mind. Okay. I'm also going to uh, ask if there are any citizens who have concerns. I see a very distinguished uh, member of the Holbrook community, among many distinguished members of the Holbrook community here, um, former chairman of the Board of Selectmen, current chairman of the Board of uh, Health, Paul uh, Callanan. Uh, Paul, did you have something you'd like to say? I, I did, Mr. Chairman. If you prefer, I'll just tell you to stay seated. Sure. I'm here on behalf of the Holbrook Board of Health and so in full support of the Holbrook Kids Initiative Group. Uh, we had a presentation by the State Tobacco um, uh, Cessation Group uh, at our last meeting, and they hit us with some staggering statistics that are particularly uh, troubling to me and particularly troubling to the Holbrook Cares Group, and that was statistically Holbrook between uh, uh, males between 18 and 35 have a 128% increase in lung cancer, and the females in that same group have a 78% increase in lung cancer over the state average. Now, what Holbrook is in the Tobacco Coalition uh, would like to do, and I'm sure Dr. DeMello, when, when we meet, is to present a survey to the students. And that survey will be a simple survey, and I understand there'll be several deletions uh, that I hope Superintendent, uh, Principal Galeo, Dr. Leo and the CARES group can get together and iron out because I think it's important that the smoking age is, as, as we know in Holbrook, was dropped to 19, um, was raised to 19, but there are still youngsters getting a hold of e-cigarettes, regular cigarettes, flavored tobacco, and so on and so forth. And as the chairman of the Board of Health, I'm, I'm imploring the school committee to allow the survey that I hope Dr. Galeo develop and the Holbrook Cares Group can get together and get out to the students. Uh, my initial uh, thought was uh, that this meeting to take place, but now I understand, as you suggested, Mr. Chairman, that the meeting is going to take place, and I will now defer it to the lovely members of the Holbrook Cares Group to express their opinion. If, and it, it's, 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 a, it's a bonding group, Mr. Chairman, in that we support them and they will support us in everything yeah. Well, I, I, I appreciate your comments, and I just want to say that we, uh, you know, had received this some time ago, and again, our efforts 
have been to make sure that this uh, gets addressed uh, where it should be addressed, which I think is between the members of Over Cares and uh, Dr. DeMello to work this out. So I'm hoping that she will meet with you, uh, maybe informally. She can even arrange a, a meeting, uh, you know, uh, with some of the leaders if they're here tonight uh, to talk to uh, to set that up. So I thought it was important that we got this letter. I didn't know you were coming. Um, so, I, but I had this letter anyway uh, because I wanted to have it. I had mentioned it, I think, to some members that I was obtaining this, and um, and uh, I'm, well, we're more than happy to hear from other citizens. I, I think it's important that the representative of Over Care speaks at this time. So she Absolutely. Speaks, if it's allowable. If she wishes to, she certainly can. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm actually on the steering committee for the Over Cares Coalition. Hi, Lindsay. And um, thanks for having us tonight. We are just very interested in building a partnership and a relationship with everyone on the school committee and all the schools in our town. And we're really looking forward to getting this survey in as it is no cost to the town, but gives tremendous data for us to move forward as a coalition, as part of other um, cluster coalitions. And we really need the data to be able to feed back so we can continue the funding and that way we have the support to be able to help the youth continue. Well, we look forward to uh, to having the schools work with you, and I applaud your efforts in Holbrook Cares and uh, your concern. And thank you very much. Are there any other citizens' concerns? I have one item I just wanted to share. Yes, ma'am. Um, I received a letter from a citizen. I just want to share a couple of main points uh, for the committee. It's from Mr. Buckley, who attends a lot of our meetings, and. Um, just to highlight some of the main things that he was um, talking about in his letter, he talked a lot about uh, getting information about the budget and how the budget works visually. And we last at the last meeting, I had introduced some slides that showed some of that data, and he he liked that and would like to see more of that. Um, it he thought that it helped him understand how the budget works, how our budget compares to other school department budgets. Um, and he'd like to see more um, data on comparing aspects of our budget to other towns to, um, to see where we stand. So that was one, one of his main topics. The other was um, he was interested in um, issues around sports and the history of sports, the press coverage of sports, and um, the funding of sports. And, and you know, giving some recognition to the work that Coach Gifford and Mr. Bulger have done, with, particularly with the seventh and eighth grade athletic program. So, um, you know, in in this area, um, you know, looking to uh, see how we can work on developing that, whether it's through an alumni association or something like that. So, thank you for that uh, proxy uh, uh, citizens' concern. We'll address some of those issues actually a little later in the meeting. Uh, when we do a couple of the subcommittee reports. Okay. So we'll try to do a discussion with regard to that. Student Advisory uh, Committee is uh, not here? Right here. They are here. <laughs> oh, please uh, pull up. Yeah, come know. on. This uh, is your seat. This is your seat <laughs> at the table here. You're entitled to a seat at the table. Welcome. So uh, please share with us uh, your report. The Holber Cub. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Perhaps uh, Mr. Buckley should see this uh, front page. The same <laughs> <laughs> I expect he will if he hasn't already. Thanks. Please go right ahead. Just give us your names. Oh, Kelly from Moscow. Okay, sorry. Kelly, that's all right. Um, so we had two field trips this Tuesday. Um, one was to the Boston Opera House. They went to see uh, the sound of music, and they're trying to get a lot more field trips like that. It was a huge success. Um, I guess uh, there was another uh, UTI, and they were learning about, they were, um, like they were talked to about um, like introductions to college and like, they were spoken to from like a few years of other colleges and um, we're going to have a lot of those like in the future. Um, uh, 
Take your time. Uh, spring sports started this week. Um, I think their games start on Monday. <coughs> Technology at its best. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they can see it though. But <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you just give us the best yeah. recollection? You don't have to be. Give us the Mary Poppins story too. <laughs> oh, um, that's on Friday and Saturday at um, seven, and then two and seven. They had like practice every week, and the ship, um, they're practicing right tonight is the mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. practice, or tomorrow, rather. Um, juniors are getting ready for prom on May 13th, and we're starting to sell tickets next week. I think they're ranging from like $75. Um, freshmen, freshmen are hosting the spring semi-formal sometime in May. I'm not sure what date. Tomorrow is the last day to donate clothes to the Salvation Army. It's run by the Junior Honor Society. The bins are across from the office and the cafeteria. Um, MCAS was last week for the 10th grade. They had the long cough ELA and sessions one and two. And Bulldog Academy is continuing for ELA Science and Math. Um, there was a basketball game for the South St. Joe's Invitational. And Kalia and Cashley tied for first in the half court shot competition. Um, for robotics, they had competitions in UMass Dartmouth and at UNH, and the newspaper published, as you can see. Um, softball has a game at the Kennedy School at the court field this year. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for that wonderful Thanks, report. Yeah, thank you. That was Do you want to put Very informative. Do, I've been asked uh, uh, more than once to take <laughs> out of uh, line uh, on our action item the field trip requests. Um, so with the uh, committee's permission, we would like to do that. Who would like to make a presentation on those? We have some guests here tonight. Welcome. Sure. Thank you. 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 2019, and I've been working with Chris Gallagher and Ms. Grant, our class advisor, for planning a trip for the 9th and 5th for this next year to um, DC. It will be November 17th to the 20th, which is a Thursday to a Sunday, and it will cost approximately $600 per person with payments due from like, June to September. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm the class secretary for the class of 2019. Um, to start off our trip, we're going to leave the school at 7 a.m. and go there and coach bus. And then we're going to arrive at Holiday Inn in Virginia at 4. And then we're going to take pictures at the Jefferson Memorial and then eat dinner. On Friday, we're going to go toward the Capitol building, which is set up by our state representatives. Um, we're going to visit the Ford Theater. We're going to have lunch at Union Station. We're going to go to museums. We're going to go to the Natural History and Holocaust Museum. Now we're going to have dinner, and then we're going to um, tour like monuments. On Saturday, we're going to go to the Arlington National Cemetery, like the tomb of the unknown soldier. We're going to go to Mount Vernon for lunch, the Air and Space Museum, and IMAX shows, and then we're going to have dinner at the Art Rock Cafe. On Sunday, we're going to check out at the hotel, and we're going to stop at the White House and the National Zoo, and return home at 9. Mm -hmm. These, this trip like, connects to what we're learning in the ninth grade. So we read the Holocaust, I mean, 
you read there by Renee and Frank, so we learned about the Holocaust, or the tour of the Holocaust Museum, so I like, see it firsthand and like really, you know, look into it. And then um, we take physics this year, so the Space and Air Museum would be really cool to see. So it's like, you know, right there. Um, in 10th grade, we take U.S. history, and everything really connects back to that. And um, in biology, we're the National Zoo and all that. And we went to like, the feeling of empathy with the Holocaust Museum and the Arlington National Cemetery. We just, and the Holocaust Museum also connects back. Because in ninth grade, we have a whole unit on like that. Does anyone have any questions? So is everyone very upset about this trip? It sounds like they're very, sounds like they're very disappointing. It's like a terrible burden. It sounds like a terribly, it sounds like a terribly ambitious and yet exciting trip. And um, well, I think we you need a motion from us. Would someone like to make a motion to approve this trip? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Just, I, I just have a question. Yes. About the ratio, I always ask the same question, mm -hmm. right. of the chaperones to students. How many chaperones? The one to ten? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. Great trip. Yeah, yeah. Thank, great trip. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Thank you, ladies. I'm going to take well, We have one more person. You have one more We have one more trip. trip. One more trip. So, um, Ms. Gallagher is very happy to talk about this trip um, because she's done this before, going to uh, Newport, um, and, and she can explain this. Please, uh, please uh, inform us. Mm -hmm. um, the trip to Newport is for 11th graders, and it connects both with their English course and their history courses. In English, um, they do all American literature, so it connects with the Great Gatsby in the time period of the 20s. And I'm just going to show you the movie was filmed down at Rosecliffe at one of the mansions. And then they're also in history, they're taking US too. So it's the, um, the same time period, and it makes all those connections for the students to go down and see it firsthand. Well, I don't know how Long Island feel about having <laughs> Claiming the Gatsby uh, claim in Rhode Island, but uh, I guess there's some, there's some connection, however tangential. Uh, I think it <laughs> sounds like a wonderful excursion. Would someone like to make a motion on that? So move. All right, and, and uh, I'm anticipating, uh, there's a second? Second. I'm anticipating uh, uh, Vice Chairman Tolson's yes, question mm -hmm. about the chaperone ratio. What would that be? Same. Mm -hmm. 10 to 1. Be the and same. Is that a day trip? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Two mansions and then have lunch on the cliff. Two mansions and lunch. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. Something good about that. That sounds yeah. good. That ratio may be a little bit higher for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds That's like a bizarre day trip I had, but it was in no way educational. <laughs> Two mansions and a, and a lunch. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, it would be really nice because we generally, you know, we approve of all these assorted trips and like that, and it would be nice once they return. I realize DC is in November, but to get a report. Um, would it? You know, all right. Well, perhaps it would. Why don't we? Just, uh, you know, a brief report. Um, no on how it went and yeah. Interesting. experiences. Well, I'm not going to make that part of the motion. No, no, we'll no, no, no. Uh, already, the motion's already been made and seconded. Right. We like to torture students. I, I can, <laughs> uh, you can see there's uh, anticipatory interest in the, in the trips, which is great. Um, all righty, let's take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we'll return to our agenda, and we'll start with the superintendent's uh, report. Uh, uh, the only thing I have right now, uh, I have two things. I have the um, letter from the bus company, and they um, had given us a letter that said originally this year, because there was a question about the time that students were being picked up, and they, so it's supposed to, they're supposed to start picking up students at 7. So at one point... I'm just um, going to stop you for one minute. Okay. Would you, do you have that letter? Yes. Why don't you read that aloud, because that's a curious letter. Mm -hmm. It's addressed to... I know. Uh, <laughs> I was interpreting it. <laughs> yeah, Patricia Lugo, dear Miss Lugo, why don't you... Who do you want? Do you have it there? I, I don't think I have it. I think I have it here. Oh, no, I have it right here. Dear Ms. Lugo, Laurie Kofink, 
Oh, well, this is hoping. Uh, South School Secretary called to report one parent's objection to bus 5, 6.54 arrival time. Trish emailed me about the parent's concern. South School requested we change the pickup time for bus 5 back to the original scheduled time of 7 a.m. First student dispatch char changed the scheduled pickup time of 7 a.m. to 6.54 in order to assure that students would arrive to school on time. The change to 6.54 a.m was made in September 2015. In November 2015, Laurie talked to Debbie Hughes, dispatcher, about the driver deviating from the original scheduled time of 7 a.m. Debbie Hughes is no longer employed with first student. I have no knowledge of conversations between her and Laurie or between Debbie and the driver. First student had not heard any more about the matter, so it was believed that the time change was resolved. The original scheduled time uh, the original scheduled pickup time of 7 a.m. went back into effect on February 29, 2016. First student sincerely apologizes to parents and students for the disruption in service and the inconvenience that was caused. Sincerely, Barbara Doherty, location manager. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, Dr. Laley, I was not pleased with this letter. Um, I can understand why the parents would have been confused. Uh, you know, with uh, different uh, time schedules and, and appearing that the bus was coming early and this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they're maintaining that they had uh, changed the time, and which is bizarre mm -hmm. um, I, and not satisfactory to me. And I would hope that uh, first student is uh, continuing as our uh, provider that there'll be checks and double checks on the schedule so that uh, we're ahead of the curve on this and not behind mm -hmm. it. I think, I think the parents Ms. Lugo are can, can talk about the monitoring system right now. Yes. Yes. So since we've had this discussion with first student to change the pickup time to start at 7 a.m., I have asked them to. They have a GPS system that uh, is computerized. So at every stop, the it's it's um, marked. The report is marked what time they stop at every stop. So. Since this day, I've had them send me the report every single morning by 9 a.m. to tell me what times this bus route stopped at each of the stops. So I can see that they aren't starting before 7 and that they're getting to the stop at approximately 7.06 as opposed to 7.55. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it seems mm -hmm. to have improved. Yeah. And, I, and I told them that I'd like these reports till I'm satisfied that this will continue. So whether it's through the end of the year, yeah. whether it's well, the parents years. are owed that. I mean, you know, this is a very, you know, this is a where we have taken charge of their children. It's important that they, you know, they're taking time out of their schedules to do this in a timely manner, and it just has to be done right. There's nothing worse than the stress and the torture to a parent if their child's not picked up or has missed a bus. Uh, it's, it's very important, and I was surprised that the buses didn't have, this is off this topic, but didn't have um, cameras. So I would hope that going forward they will, that we'll put that in our contract, because I think that's very important to see what the bus driver's <clears throat> behavior is. We want to make sure things are being done right. Our bids just, that wasn't in the bid document. No, it was. Oh, you did? Okay, it so, was, they, yes. so do they, are they going to provide them? They have to provide them. So do we, but they didn't provide the CPA. Mm -hmm. No. So how are we going to ensure that that's going to happen? Well, that's part of the contract. So mm -hmm. it, well, actually we, I put out the bus bids and today was the due date for the bids and only one company did put in a bid, which was for a mm -hmm. student. Mm -hmm. um, no other companies bid on it. So in the bid was the fact that they have to have cameras on every single bus, field trips, athletic trips, and the regular transportation. And it's going to be part of the contract and it, I will spot check those, those buses and if there's no cameras. Do they have cameras? I mean, do they have buses that have cameras? Of course they do. I'm sure they do. Hopefully. Because that's what, that was a problem we had in our contract before that they'd have seat belts, which is not what any of them are providing, I guess, but um, that was not done. So, um, you know, they, I don't know if they read the fine print, so we just have to make sure that that is Absolutely. going to be in the bus because they're not presently. <clears throat> they, do have bus, they do have cameras. At one point, there was some bus issues several years ago, and a camera was installed on the bus. So on that bus. On that particular bus. bus. Mm -hmm. Um, at the time, so mm -hmm. 
Yes, they can do it. They can. Oh, I know they can do it. I just want to make sure they, they do mm -hmm. do it. And just, um, can you talk a little bit about developing a way for parents to formally complain, uh, register a concern? Because sure. I think that's mm -hmm. that, that was a problem mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. Um, I would like to, in September, I would like to have a bus complaint form put onto our Holbrook Public Schools website <coughs> so that if a parent has concern, uh, they can download the form and make sure it gets to us and create one standardized form so that the principals and assistant principals can use it, the parents can use it. Some things, um, for instance, that for instance, I'd have whether it was a, a South School or a JFK, they can circle which school it is real easy, the date, the time, you know, the, the pertinent information that we'll need to know and get that into uh, as soon as possible. And I'll keep a log of that and uh, believe me, we'll have uh, regular conversations with first student um, in the upcoming year to mm -hmm. make sure that none of this yes. these things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They work. They work for us. They serve us. Mm -hmm. They serve our mm -hmm. students and our parents. It's not we don't serve them. They're serving us. And, and they get a fair amount of money to do so. Sure. And um, so we've. I've got to hold them accountable mm -hmm. to that. And the other issue that's arisen. I don't know that it's been an issue too much this year other than a couple um, is that some way of notifying parents mm -hmm. if a bus is running late mm -hmm. I mean it happens mm -hmm. um, that but you know if you've got a parent standing outside when it's 10 degrees mm -hmm. out with their six-year-old and not having any idea whether the bus is coming did they miss it is it late mm -hmm. or how late is it um, it would be helpful to develop a system to notify, you know, posting it on the Hobart Public Schools Facebook page. Um, just, you know, a, a quick notification. Yeah. But they're, um, you know, usually out there. That's the problem. Well, I know, but... Yeah. Well, hopefully the bus company has something that they can do while that's happening. Uh, you know, they should have the capacity to be able to do that, if they're, particularly if they're on a GPS uh, system. They should have the ability to be able to monitor that and have a website that the parents can go to. And I think, you know, again, who has the information, how to get it, that's, that's a key thing. We have to do a better job of communicating, you know, what we're doing, because I think when there's silence, people get anxious. So I, I think that's very important, and uh, I'm pleased to see that uh, some steps are being taken. Thank you. Are there any other questions on this issue? Please, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please continue, Dr. Lally. Um, no, that was the, um, the first of the issues. And I just wanted to say that um, um, Mr. and Mrs. John McFadden donated money to the Robotics Club, and so I just wanted to um, tell you that there is a check here that um, you need to accept. And I think it was to... Um, there were, there were expenses, and so the, they stepped up and and made a donation. So we really appreciate that, and I think the students appreciate it. So um, that was, I believe, when they were doing the dinners before they were um, going to the competition. So it was really nice to. Yeah. So this is to accept a donation of twenty five dollars right. from John and Lena McFadden. Do I have a motion on that? So moved. Is there a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. That passes unanimously. Thank you. We'll thank them very much for that. Um, we'll send them a letter. Okay. Is that the... I think that's all I have Let's end with the report. Okay. So now we'll go to the financial update with uh, Trish Lugo, our school business administrator. Okay. And in your packet, you should have the uh, expense reports for both the payroll and the operational expenses. Um, and again, I'm just making sure that the expenditures to date align with the time frame that we're in in this school year. And it happens to be so. Um, the payroll for admin and 12 month staff should be at about 73%, and the payroll for the teachers should be at about 62%. And if you look at the percentages of what's expended, mm -hmm. we're pretty much right in line with those areas. So payroll is running smoothly, and I don't see any uh, concerns there. 
Uh, if we go to the operational expenses, again, some things are spent at the beginning of the year, so they may already be 100% spent. So the expenditure column isn't a good um, way to measure the expenditures, whether they're in line or not. However, I do watch those uh, very intensely as well. And we're getting to, if you look at the last page of the operational budget, which says page three of three, which should be the last page there, um, you'll see that we have encumbered $1.2 million and the available balance is at a negative $4,000. So we're at the point now, which is typical April and May, of finding out what's encumbered that we, will, that we know we won't spend, that we will disencumber mm -hmm. and allow it to pay for other bills. Um, this is where we kick in if there are overages in special ed tuitions, where we take a look at the circuit breaker balance and pay the, the So will we be seeing that at our next meeting? We'll be seeing the kick in? Probably, mm -hmm. pro probably. I like, I, April is my month to really get in and take a good look at things. Okay. Um, in May is where More likely steps in May. need to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So sometime, probably early May, we'll start seeing budget. So are there any red flags? Is there anything out of the ordinary from your expertise here that would be somewhat troubling or of concern? No, none whatsoever. All righty. That's good to know. And Thank then you. you're welcome. And then the other report is regarding the grants. I believe there are seven grants that we have in this district, and I've provided that so you can see what's been appropriated uh, for the grants and how much is available. So some grants um, move right along during the school year and we pay expenses or salaries throughout the school year so you'll see activity there. Some grants are geared toward expenditures at the end of the school year so that's why you may see some that don't look like there's money spent yet, but uh, it's gearing up for the next few months. Right. And the intent with the grants is to spend every penny down yeah. and uh, not return any funds to the Department of Ed. And that's what we work well, on. I want to thank you for the clarity of these reports. They're easy to read. Uh, they're very uh, useful the way you've set them up. I just want to encourage you to continue that. And, uh, thank you. The important thing is that this information is coming right from the general ledger. I could easily take this information and download it to an Excel worksheet um, and present it to you in a different format, mm -hmm. but then you have errors that may occur, human errors that may occur, typos and things like that. So here you see it right from the general ledger. So there's you know, no chance, so it, you're actually looking right into the accounting system by seeing them on these reports. How are we doing on the dashboarding, the financial dashboard? I'm working with Woody on that. Okay. We should have something um, very soon. Great. Good. Are Mr. there Chair? any questions? Yes. One question. Um, Trish, about the uh, encumbered expenses, What are there any typical areas where you might look to to unencumber some funds? I, oh, sure. At this what, point, what we can probably typical? heating. Okay. Because we're past the winter season. Okay. Um, not yet, we're not. <laughs> there well, be snow almost there. Almost. <laughs> almost. almost. <laughs> um, so the, heat, the heating, uh, possibly the utilities, the electric okay. as well. Since we're out of the dark winter season, um, maybe there, you know, the electricity mm. bills might mm -hmm. um, not be as as, as okay. um, large as they they would be. Um, so the utilities we look at, um, the maintenance of the buildings. At this point, you know, we can thank our lucky stars that we've gotten through another yeah. school year without having to put a lot of maintenance money in. So maintenance um, funds will probably mm -hmm. be relieved as well. Mm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, excellent. All righty, so now we're turned to some of the discussion items that we have. Uh, Mr. Gordon is gonna be visiting us around eight o'clock. Um, talk a little bit so but why don't we start on the budget and then we can always go back to that to, to some degree um, as you know we've been trying to work with the selectmen this year to um, come up with a unified budget and in principle we have one um, they're going to vote on this and I think mr. Gordon is going to talk about that as you know in the past um, 
which was a deviation really of what I recall early on when I first got involved in town government. Um, typically the selectmen used to create a budget and then it would be reviewed by the finance committee and at some point apparently that stopped happening and so the various departments would uh, I think unduly burden the finance committee with trying to figure out what the budget ought to be of the, of the departments and um, very burdensome on the, um, the volunteers as opposed to all of the departments in the town who are doing this day in and day out, getting together and trying to say, you know, what can we do with the budget? So this year was an attempt to do that, and I think it's come out, you know, it's not what we would have liked. Um, they have recommended, uh, and, and we will accept it, it's a 3% increase in the budget, which results in, from our charts here, uh, approximately, a uh, you know a loss of uh, $263,900 from what we had asked for. Um, we were hoping to get it a little higher, but that's the way it is based on what we have. And um, we apparently can do the things that we want to do for this coming year uh, with that amount of money. I've been assured that by the uh, both uh, Superintendent Lally and the uh, business uh, uh, manager. And um, I suppose um, those funds will be made out of certain accounts that uh, I don't need, I don't think we need to get into tonight, but uh, hopefully we can do that and then move forward. So our goal of not only maintaining what we have, but moving forward. So for example, Latin is gonna be in next year's program, which is very exciting. That's gonna be the second foreign language now offered at the school. We've been the only school district in the area that's only had one foreign language. So that's a significant change. Um, there'll be other changes like this moving forward, and we hope that when the new building uh, opens that um, people will see how great the um, you know offerings are and what a value for their dollar they're getting by sending their children to the uh, Holbrook uh, Public Schools. I, I've always believed that you know if people have a specialty and they really want to go to a specialty school, then they should go to it. If they have a legacy and they're really you know this is an important thing for the families, there's nothing wrong with that. But nobody should leave our school district because they believe we don't have an adequate amount of course offerings <coughs> or, or educational opportunities for their child and go into debt um, to send them to a school that they think will give them a better opportunity. And at some point during this meeting, I'm going to read off these uh, colleges that the, the, this latest class has gotten into. They're very impressive. Uh, and uh, last year's were equally impressive. So um, that is my little statement on the budget, and I'll turn it over to the other members of the committee to discuss. Someone would like to comment on it. Well, I, I would just like to you know, personally thank the Board of Selectmen for their time and energy and effort uh, in taking a comprehensive look you know, at the school budget. I know they looked at every department's budget, but... Um, I'd like, I want to thank them for their time and energy. I thought they did a very effective job. Yeah, I would agree. I think it was a pretty collaborative process, mm -hmm. and they listened to what we, you know, what we had to say, and um, you know, we appreciate that. And you know, certainly it would have been nice to get more, but I, I honestly do believe that they did the best that they could, and um, we're going to have to do the best that we can with that money. So. And it's sort of thrilling to be the first time, and I have my recollection that we're not fighting with the other departments over right. uh, funds. So I, I think you know working together with the departments opens up a more mature dialogue going forward as to what our budgets are and what our actual costs of education are. And, and so I'm, you know coupled with the dashboarding and when the town gets the soft right system. 
the accounting uh, transparency. I think that uh, people are going to be very excited to see that they'll have information at their fingertips that the towns, departments are working together with each other because, you know, this, this artificial idea of the school side and the town side is on some level ridiculous. It's all one town. And we, we live here, we we'll try to work with one another, and like Ben Franklin said, if we don't uh, hang together, we're going to hang separately. So, um, you know, it's an efficiency that we're going to look forward to, and um, I, I, I do look forward to going forward with this in a, in a way that's responsible. Okay, um, now we'll turn to our next uh, item, which are reports um, of, the, uh, of the school committee. Um, is that correct? No, um, I think that's left over from the previous uh, from the report from the, yeah, the yeah, town. The town. Okay. The town report. Oh, the okay. town report. Believe, that's unless... absolutely right. We've already done that. Yeah. So, um, is that, you know, has that been sent in? Dr. Lally, too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. So I might as well comment on that since we have it on there for discussion. We, uh, as you know, one of the, again, talk about communication, one of the gaping holes has been the annual reports have not been submitted. You know, they're, they're by law supposed to be prepared by the Board of Selectmen, and they're, I know there's a number of back years that haven't been done. And those books are very important because they have the budget, they have the reports of the various departments, and they give people in the town an opportunity to see how the town is doing, where they expend their money, and it's a great uh, informational session. And you know, they talk about people not participating in the town. How can they participate if they've never been given the information to see how the town works? So this year, again, I want to thank. Uh, Town Administrator Gordon for uh, for recognizing how important this is. They're putting together the town report, uh, and we've contributed our portion, which included not only our committee but the superintendent and the principals and the entire district's report. So we're looking forward to uh, to having that uh, produced at the town meeting and also available at the town clerk's office for uh, dissemination and hopefully uh, also on. Uh, online for people to see it uh, online. Um, with regard to school committee member reports, why don't we take care of member reports? Are there any particular members who would like to give a member report? Yes. I just have a couple things. Um, again, the, the musical is Mary Poppins and it is in fact tomorrow night um, and Saturday. Um, the, there is a STEAM night at the South School next Wednesday, and the sixth grade volleyball game is April 14th. Um, I have a, I'd like to do a brief building update, but I will wait on that. But there's also, we got an email, or I got an email, um, the Mass Association of School Committees is having a school committee panel discussion on high school later start time um, on April 7th at Newton, Newton North High School if anybody's available or is interested. Um, that's been a big thing on the list serve lately about um, later, you know, research has showed that starting the high school later is a benefit to all parties, so there's a discussion on April 7th if anybody can go um, and they can register on the MASC website. And I'd like to give a brief member report. These are the college acceptances um, for the Holbrook Junior Senior High School, and I just want to say them because it's, you know, it's it's as good as any, any private school can get. We have Anna Maria College, Babson College, Becker College, Bridgewater State University, Boston College, Calvin College, Coastal Carolina University, Cornell University, Curry College, Eastern Nazarene College, Elon University, Emerson College, Emmanuel College, Framingham State University, Franklin Pierce, Geneva College, Gordon College, Hofstra University, College of the Holy Cross, 
Johnson and Wales University, LaSalle College, Lynchburg College, Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, Merrimack College, New England College, Nichols College, Plymouth State, uh, Quinnipiac University, Regis College, Rhode Island College, Salem State University, St. Anselm College, St. Joseph's College, Simmons College, Southern New Hampshire University, Stonehill College, Suffolk University, University of Charleston, University of Maine at Orono, University of Mass at Amherst, University of Mass Boston, Dartmouth and Lowell University of New England, University of New Hampshire, University of New Haven, University of North Carolina at Charlotte, University of North Florida, University of North Hartford, the University of Notre Dame, Wellesley College, West Virginia University, Westfield State University, Wheaton College, and Wheelock College. And congratulations to all those who were accepted into these colleges. But, you know, it points out that you're getting a great education at the Paul Virginia Senior High School. And I would, um, uh, you know, I would certainly uh, challenge anyone to say that they're getting a better rate at some other of uh, these schools. Uh, Chairman? Yes. And the other thing is that most of those schools, our students get accepted to regularly. This is not like a flash in the pan. That's true. Many of those schools we have almost every year students getting accepted to. Whether they go is more often than not a financial decision as opposed to lack of desire. But the majority of that list are places that our students are regularly accepted mm -hmm. to. Did you say Worcester Polytech? Um, I don't think so. I don't think, I don't so. think that's, I did. That's unusual because that's usually on the list every year as well right. and could still be. Well, there are some that are and there aren't occasionally right. that happens. But it, it is a list that our students I know last year Cornell was on the list too, right. so for example, mm -hmm. so you know, uh, didn't see Boston University this year, and I was on last year. But, uh, the, um, I, I will say this, it's, it's a great opportunity and people should just come and see, come to the open houses uh, that the high school offers and, uh, and, uh, and really uh, talk up, you know, the, the value, uh, and I say this to all the members, not only of the school community, but the general community, talk up the great opportunities that are available here because, you know, there's nothing worse than seeing a family get into debt for some private school and, you know, they really, the acceptance rate of the colleges aren't that much different and, uh, you know, they can get a great education here. So uh, congratulations again to those students. Um, now we're going to talk about the um, foundation, all uh, subcommittee reports. And I'd like to start with uh, the the Holbrook School Foundation. Would you talk about that a little bit, uh, Secretary Altieri? Sure. I reached out to, you know, having conversations, um, reached out to several folks in the community as well as I've spoken to Dr. Lally about this, and we've formed a small uh, time-limited committee to take a look at the feasibility and the design and the setup of a educational foundation for the district, district of Holbrook. We have our first you know, formal meeting scheduled for Wednesday, April 13th. Um, Pam, and, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, well, I just want to say this is a private endeavor. It's not being generated by the schools. This is a private foundation, you know, and the people are meeting to, uh, to discuss it, which is a great thing, and uh, it's my hope that from their discussions, a, the foundation will get developed and on the ground, and it will be a great opportunity not only to raise money in a way that's very sophisticated for our community, and, and I've had some feelers out to do some national fundraising for a foundation if, that, if it gets off the ground, which is exciting, but um, also just some of the opportunities for both teachers uh, to be offered certain grants or even set up programs, you know, uh, um, this this area is crying out for, I think, an alumni association. You know, there really should be an association of alumni who work with one another and help one another and open the doors of opportunity to one another and 
um, that's something that you know a foundation can help plant the seed in, uh, so that um, the uh, some of these issues that were being raised in these letters, again, are concerned people who feel something isn't being addressed and they want to do something about it. And sometimes they feel like it's a voice crying in the wilderness, and it really isn't. It's really a matter of organizing it properly and communicating properly and having good faith with one another. Rather than thinking the worst, thinking the best and trying to help one another um, and assist one another to do the right thing because you know, ultimately that's what people do. I mean, that's why they, that's why they care. You know, and so we get it. We want to try to help on that, and I'm hoping that um, I'm very excited about that. And I hope these private uh, individuals will uh, will go forward with this uh, foundation. Um, are there any other subcommittee uh, reports? Well, I do have a building update. It's not go ahead. Really a subcommittee, but just as a reminder, it's been posted. But the um, the last beam <coughs> will be in the high school parking lot um, after the close of school on Friday, April 15th. That's the start of April vacation. And will remain there through Monday morning. Monday's a holiday. Um, that's April vacation for people to come up, bring your own Sharpie, and sign the beam. Um, and the Topping off ceremony will be Tuesday, April 19th at 9.30 in the morning. Um, so that um, Beth and I are working on the, the program and um, emails will be going out for the, the, basically the same speakers as the, um, the groundbreaking. Um, <coughs> And I also want to thank the staff here and Secretary uh, Alterio for helping on the budget subcommittee because that was a great, uh, in between our meetings, was really a great help in trying to get some of those uh, dialogues done. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, 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 I can't say enough how excited I am about that issue. I'm also uh, intrigued by our next uh, action item, which is about the Foundation Budget Commission Review Report, um, and I, I do have an amendment to offer that would be in addition to the uh, suggested uh, vote by the, uh, the, that was suggested by the Association of uh, School Committees. Um, it was very interesting reading that report. Also, you could feel the frustration of the committee members in the lack of funding and the lack of opportunity to address other issues. And I, obviously, that formula needs to be fixed. You know, the ELL, the SPED, uh, some of the other areas that they addressed in there are vital that it be readjusted. But I also think that we as a committee should let them know that we don't believe that the formula necessarily, even as amended, um, is uh, effective to adequately meet the constitutional mandate regarding the public education of our youth. And we do believe that you know alternative approaches in the future should be studied and considered. I'm not saying that they'll be adopted, but I think that you know we've had now 25 years of this. And um, you know, is it the best way to allocate the money for our cities and towns? I'm not so sure that it is, um, and I do believe that there should be. And the commission, as much as it says so, which, I mean, it should be further you know, study. And so that's the only amendment that I would uh, suggest to, that we add. But uh, certainly, uh, yeah, you know, I have something to say. Um, I updated the slide with the school committees and boards of selectmen and finance committees that are supporting it and the resolutions on the back, but I also made copies of the resolution um, pre-filled out. Um, I have the one from the Suburban Coalition that we talked about, but I also printed out um, the Cambridge um, resolution, which is a little 
less specific um, in case whatever the pleasure of the school committee is. My only con my only concern, and this is me personally, with the um, amendment. My concern is you have a committee that spent several months crafting this with several public hearings, and we're basically saying this is really good, but we don't think it's going to work. And I'm not sure we want to be biting the hand that feeds us. Um, you know, we're undercalculated by almost four million dollars in the uh, underfunded mandate. So, you know, it would be great if the town could recoup some of that. Um, you know, even if we got 25% of that each year, I mean, that's a, that's a million dollars that... Yeah, well, I think that misreads the amendment, and we're not saying that at all. We're just questioning whether the formula as a whole is adequate to um, meet the constitutional mandate regarding public education. So it's really calling for, you know, further analysis of whether the formula should be replaced maybe with something else. And, and so it's not really, we, I mean, we want to pass. Uh, it, obviously, the formula is going to be here. Calling for a future study committee is just what it says. Just voice the, my opinion. We're allowed to have discussion. You are. Um, but I think it's important to say, because I think that uh, my only concern about this is that we're, you know, reinforcing the formula, you know, by tweaking it. I just want it to be understood that uh, we understand that recognize that the formula may not be the only end all and be all of uh, this uh, issue, which is important to our students because I mean ultimately, um, you know, just because Horace Mann set up a system, you know, in 1840 doesn't necessarily mean it's the most effective way to to deliver educational services in the 21st century. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it needs to be phrased better, but when I read that, the first thing I thought of is, our legislative delegation will be really pissed at this, and you know, trying to garner the support, because it really seems that we're saying that all that work that was done isn't enough. Yeah. But, well, I know, don't feel that way. I mean, that's I, my, well, obviously, I, I doubt the legislator's gonna, gonna be over looking at the whole you know, you know, maybe we could take a look at, you know, separating it out and, um, you know, supporting and adopting the recommendations, you know, clearly, and then separating it out, and then, you know, for consideration, whereas the form is not working, um, maybe further maybe exploration is needed, but adopt the report, or, you know, mm -hmm. Why don't we just maybe, yeah. you, know, you know, you're making a nice point. Why don't we just use the last sentence? We believe an alternative approach in the future should be studied and considered. Um, well, that, would that be easier? My suggestion was going to be um, the resolution, you know, we want to obviously sign off on the resolution mm -hmm. and we'll let people know. But in addition to send a letter to our legislative delegation that we, the Holbrook School Committee is unanimously, well, well whatever the vote is, mm -hmm. Um, supported this resolution and you know we would urge you to do the same but blah 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 right well I would rather put an amendment on you know that and, and, and actually the study says that anyway so I mean mm -hmm. I don't see what harm it would be to say we believe an alternative approach in the future should be studied and considered I don't think that's going to cause any problem because that's a future study it's mm -hmm. not the current I would uh, defer on the, the rest of the pref the, the rest of it really is uh, a preface. So these are really good um, points to acknowledge, and but maybe adding so considering some of the points that Barbara has brought to our attention, but then adding the, to this. But we also the last line, yeah, yeah, the last line, just we the last line. Yeah, just right the last line. Too. I think that mm -hmm. makes sense. That's a good point. Um, um, well, all right. So why don't we adopt the. Uh, well, do which one do you? Which one are you? Well, we should I'm start just, with the original you know, uh, resolution, just, right? I just the, the that's the main one from the suburban coalition that everybody's been passing. Mm -hmm. The other one is from Cambridge, okay. and I just wanted to um, you know toss it out there. Oh, I was gonna you know what I was gonna try and do the editing, but I wouldn't mind. I, I wouldn't mind. I would say this. I wouldn't mind this. Mm -hmm. And then the line.
line mm -hmm. about we believe in alternative approach. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, so I I can't I can't get to the file to update okay. it because for some reason it's not. You don't need to necessarily have to do it. Maybe we can have Bridget. Well, I mean, I've already got that yeah. already saved. Yeah. Right. And I could okay. just All right. get it to him. You want to do it, yeah. fine. So, um, so would somebody like to move the resolution uh, that's entitled Suburban Coalition, but put it in the form of a Holbrook, uh, uh, Holbrook School Committee resolution with the addition of at the end of it, um, we believe an alternative approach in the future should be studied and considered. I make that motion. Anyone like to second that? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Just a, a question on just how it will be structured. Will that last sentence just be added right on to the end of the yes, final paragraph? That's right. Um, <coughs> all right. All those in favor of the Yes. Uh, no, I was. Oh, <laughs> all those in favor of the resolution as amended. All right, so that passes unanimously. Now, Mr. Chairman, um, yes. may I have permission to bring this to the attention of the Board of Selectmen as well, requesting their support to our legislative delegation, complete with PowerPoint and, you know, the same PowerPoint that we had. Why not? Thank I you. think it's important for folks to know Why about not? this. I think Never. that's a great idea. Yeah, and the, the information out there is, mm -hmm. is you do. something a lot of people don't have. Mm -hmm. You do. Oh, isn't it for me? You're part of the communication committee, so communicating is important. Thank you, sir. Thank All you. Right. Thank Good. you, Barbara. Good idea. The, um, our next item of business are uh, school committee minutes. Of We'll start with February 18th, 2016. I'll make a motion to approve the February 18th minutes. Second. Okay, are there any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. It passes. And we'll now turn to the March 10th, 2016 school committee minutes. Will we accept those minutes as printed? Is there a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. That passes unanimously. Um, is there any old business? Okay. New business. Well, I don't see Mr. Gordon here, so I will simply give a report of what he had told me that. Apparently, the selectmen hadn't formally done a vote yesterday, and I was a little concerned about that, uh, and I made my concerns known this morning. He assures me that the selectmen are going to vote this, just as it was last night in a, in a unified uh, budget, um, that apparently, uh, you know, they're doing this for the first time, and they're trying to see if they can... Uh, get some consensus from the Finance Committee, but they're going to go forward regardless, you know, with the unified budget. And um, he's also assured me that each department in the town will back the school department. And I think vice versa, because, I mean, this is a budget we've all agreed to. And um, I'm hoping that the people listening to this, whether they're town meeting members or not, will understand that this we a so-called selectman's budget has been worked out by the departments. Um, you know, we're in agreement of that for this year, and um, it's a great opportunity to move this town forward uh, in, a, in, a, in a predictable manner. And quite frankly, return the Finance Committee to what it normally would do, which would be to review a budget. You know, make sure there wasn't anything under the table or untoward or you know, the sorts of things that you would expect a volunteers to do, but, you know, to expect the volunteers to actually craft a budget and the people who are with it day in and day out are not communicating Ms. with Mr. Chairman, Mr. Gordon is just around. Ah, great. Come on in, Mr. Gordon. Oh, I'm going to give Mr. Gordon, we'll entertain a motion to allow Mr. Gordon to address our committee. Is that? So moved. Yep. Is there a second to that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 
Yeah, not to put you on the spot. You came at a timely yeah. moment. We were just discussing uh, what took place and that you had, had we had spoken earlier about some of the uh, concerns we had when a vote wasn't taken. Right. And can you just explain the, you know, what you've done since we spoke about so that? So I, I reached out and spoke to the uh, chairman of the board of selectmen, um, and uh, he made it very clear to me, and I think the board was very clear in their support last night yeah. uh, that we will take a vote at the next selectmen's meeting, and that they that there is they fully support the the budget that was proposed last night. Great. So uh, my anticipation is our next meeting is. Uh, Let's see, it's two, two weeks, so it's April, uh, is that the 13th? 13. Whatever that Tuesday is. Um, 12. 12. It'll be on the agenda. Uh, I don't expect that there's going to be a lot of time spent on the budget that night because we had such a productive meeting last night. And uh, I anticipate that the, a vote will be taken to support the budget uh, as proposed. And I, and I just want you to know we fully support all of the appropriations for the departments that are under that budget other than the schools. So that that's, we that's believe great. it's truly a unified uh, budget. Lastly, I like the BSU. Uh, oh, the BSU and the Red Sox. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Thank so, you. Okay, great. great. Can you get a present? Um, all righty. Is there any other new business? Thanks, Tim. Okay. Just, Tim, uh, thank you again for okay. all thank your work you, on the budget. Thank you. Yeah. Very so we'll go to the order here. Is uh, I can entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.